Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our presentation, Stocks versus Cryptocurrencies. Uh, this project was completed by Connor, Ben, Lucas, and me. So in this project, we looked at four different industry stocks data and explored their economic health by examining various indicators from United States census data and also looked at four popular cryptocurrencies in order to determine a potential better investment for a client. We tried to create a mock client's investment portfolio and based on our findings to make predictions and recommendations for that client. Uh, so here are some of the exploratory questions that we looked at. Uh, what is the economic picture for the industries in question? And if there is a correlation between US census economic data and stock performance and uh, how would the mock portfolio perform on the market? And if it's predictable with the machine learning and what is a better investment for a client cryptocurrency or uh, traditional stocks? For uh, our data handling, most of our data comes from uh, API calls and census data. And for the livestock data, we created a data pipeline and use a cloud ETL that runs every minute. And the historical API and census data was cleaned and loaded into a SQL database, as well as stored as a backup in a Azure data lake. More about the uh, economic picture from Lucas. We went to the Census Bureau for economic data, and we found this data on the number of establishments in each of these industries. And on the next slide, we've got, <clears throat> we've got data on the revenue in each of these industries. And on the next slide, we were able to drill down into some smaller specific sectors within these industries, and again, get data on establishments and revenue. And you could look at this and conclude, for example, that commercial banking has lots of establishments, lots of revenue. So if a specific commercial banking business has lots of establishments and not a lot of revenue, probably not a safe investment. Unfortunately, the Census Bureau's data wasn't really more extensive than this. And it was from five years ago, while our stock and crypto data only goes back five months. So drawing more substantive conclusions from this probably isn't the best idea. Anyway, moving on to the next slide, we can actually take a look at the performances of some of these stocks. So these two stocks, MGP Ingredients Incorporated and Verizon, are pretty good examples of the pattern that most of the stocks we looked at followed over this time period of the past five months, which is when their prices go down, they don't stay down, not for long. There will be brief periods where their prices go down, but they pretty reliably rebound and bounce back up again. And that's why in the long run, the prices of these stocks keep appreciating. And you can see that here. Crypto, on the other hand, uh, is not as reliable. Crypto is susceptible to sustained periods of depreciation. Bitcoin and Dogecoin here are pretty good examples of what all the cryptocurrencies did. You can see in the past five months, there was a brief period where they were going up, but then ever since November, they've been steadily going down. And there's no guarantee that it's ever going to go back up again. So probably not going to be as safe an investment as stocks. But anyway, Connor is going to talk about machine learning now. Great. So you heard from Sargus that um, we wanted to use machine learning in trying to predict these uh, stock prices. And the information we were looking at were high prices for two particular uh, entities, um, Apple Incorporated stock and uh, the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Um, and we decided to go with ARIMA and autoregressive models uh, as they were relatively straightforward and um, they were well suited to this time series, um, which is quite a component in stocks and cryptocurrencies. Um, so we wanted to pick algorithms that sort of uh, uh, would preserve that aspect of the data. 
Um, one thing we had to do um, was to use the indices of the observations rather than the date that came with them. Um, there were irregular dates that would cause the algorithms to not be able to pick up on the frequency information of the dates. Um, and it caused a number of issues. And once we switched over to the indices, those issues started to go away. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So just a little bit of background on these models. The autoregressive model um, uses the previous points in the time series. Um, so basically the plots you just saw, um, it uses those previous points to predict the next one. Um, and the only hyperparameter present um, is the lag or sometimes called the order. Um, and that just specifies how many of the pass points you want to use. Um, there's kind of a sweet spot. If you use too many pass points, um, you actually get worse accuracy. Um, so uh, we can use a plot like the one on the right, uh, a partial or autocorrelation function plot um, to uh, help us estimate what the correct parameter for the lag is. Um, it's usually those uh, points that sort of uh, are contained within these blue boxes, but sort of rise above or below it. Um, usually you want the um, those as they uh, contribute uh, most effectively. Um, but uh, the ARIMA model, um, on the other hand, is an extension of this AR model. Um, and it incorporates integration and moving average techniques. Um, so it was our objective to sort of compare the autoregressive model, which is a simpler model, to this more complicated model. Um, and it's more suited to complex data, but it also requires greater computational resources and time. Um, we can go to the next slide. So for the ARIMA model, grid search was used to uh, locate those parameters since um, it has a it has three hyperparameters, and so there are a number of combinations that could work best. So we used an automatic grid search to uh, locate those hyperparameters. Um, and we then fit the model to our data, uh, having split it into training and testing, where the testing was the last 15 uh, data points. Um, and we then plotted the first five predictions to sort of get an idea for how well it was predicting. Um, unfortunately, um, the stock market and the cryptocurrency data uh, were just too volatile for there to be any meaningful pattern to the algorithms. And so you see these kind of uh, flat lines emerge. Um, and for the rest of the testing set, this pattern continues. Um, so we attempted to experiment with other hyperparameters, um, but we just could not seem to get any significant change in the results. Um, and this may be due to just the overall volatility of the data um, contributing to sort of a, a, a flat line in the end. But we can go to the next slide where uh, Ben is going to talk about uh, where to invest potentially. Yeah, so to the question, do you want to invest in stocks or crypto within this portfolio? We concluded that stocks probably the better option as crypto, less stable, and that floor value wasn't really known as they seem to be depreciating more and more as time goes on, at least within this uh, time frame here. Um, and stocks also show this consistent potential for rebounding after a loss in value. And also a lot of them are showing this um, you know, consistent appreciation trend line. Um, and also one last thing about stock is that they kind of, they come uh, kind of preloaded with these economic metrics that you can really drill down into and glean insight from in order to guide your investments. Cryptos, you know, don't really have that feature. Um, you go to the next slide. Uh, and so, you know, more to the point, which stocks within this portfolio? Well, you could probably do worse than Bank of America and Apple, as both are showing kind of that trend line. I was talking about that upward mobility. Uh, as well as that um, behavior where when they depreciate, they have a tendency to reappreciate after a period of time. Um, you can go to the next slide. And so in conclusion, um, stocks within this portfolio, you know, they offer more secure investment opportunity uh, opposed to crypto um, that are experiencing periods of weakness that really aren't showing any uh, immediate signs of relent. Um, both offer difficulty when attempting to predict them um, with machine learning, um, where we could go from here. Um, we could explore more economic metrics to kind of guide our investments into the stocks. Um, we could look at crypto to uh, examine potential uh, opportunity for depreciation or reappreciation. 
And, you know, with machine learning, we could also look into other algorithms that perhaps are more multidimensional than uh, the one dimension of a time series. Um, thanks for listening to our presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. And I will say as someone that is not a um, attentive investor, let's say, I've, I've had a lot of curiosity around crypto. So I found this interesting and I guess confirms that I'm not skilled enough or active enough to be uh, adventuring into the cryptocurrency world. But I'm curious from your perspective, um, what was the, the data point or the um, revelation that you each found maybe most interesting as you went through this, as you were going through and kind of working with the data, what do you think you learned and what were you surprised by? So Connor. Um, probably the uh, least shocking thing to me was the fact that we could not predict stocks very well, because if that was the case, um, you know, I, I think everyone would be you know, pretty rich or the market would be extremely static, yeah. uh, two of those possibilities. But um, perhaps the most surprising um, was the just the level of like information that we were able to pull for the real time information. I mean, um, uh, like we were able to do that uh, basically every minute um, and we could have gone even faster, like three times a minute, perhaps even um, with some of the APIs we were looking at. Um, so it really gave us uh, an opportunity where um, some groups had to simulate their real time data. We were able to just, you know, work with actual real time data, which was uh, exciting. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't show off our dashboard, but um, that sort of information is uh, easily accessible there and updates every minute. And so it, it's, a, it's a it was a lot of fun to work on that. Awesome. Lucas. Uh, the most surprising thing um, to, God, I don't know, geez. Um, or maybe most interesting, you know, something that you were like, that was fun, that was an interesting thing that I hadn't expected. You know, Lucas, I think you were talking earlier about how you found it interesting, how uh, we were having such difficulty predicting the stocks with, uh, with Arima, given how recommended it was. Yeah, that's because someone earlier said that was the go-to model, right? But then you guys basically got a flat, flat line. So why are they using that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one thing, I guess. That's okay. Ben, how about you? What did you think was maybe most interesting? Yeah, I mean, honestly, to me, the one thing that stood out is that so often we rely on these third-party platforms for getting our data for stocks, say Bloomberg, for example. When in reality, the data is right there available to you with these APIs. So if you really want that data for yourself and kind of want to dig into it to yourself, you know, that opportunity is there for you without having to pay some premium. Because these are all free, you know, I mean, at least, you know, the way we utilize them. It's a really interesting point. Yeah, people pay a ton of money to be able to get access to that type of data through other services. Just have to have some skills, right? So. Yeah, basically. Yeah, neat. How about you, Sarges? Uh, I think it's interesting how... Uh... The entire cryptocurrency market is based on uh, just hype, and there is really no economic indicators on what's going to happen. And yet, uh, yeah, it's still surprising why would anyone invest their money into something that is so unpredictable. Yeah, I'm fat. I am fascinated by that, especially the rise in some of these cryptos. Right, like if there's no economic connection. Why is Dogecoin the one that people are into versus whatever myriad of others that exist out there? It's a meme. The real answer to that is it's a yeah. meme, but full stop. I... Fascinating, the behaviors of individuals. Well, this was an excellent project. Really, really well done. Again, just like I said, it's, it's fun to learn something and um, I absolutely did here. So congratulations, you guys. This was an excellent project. Really, really well done. Um, congratulations. Thank you.